Hey YouTube, today I'm going to show you guys how to create a Minecraft server on your Raspberry Pi. First of all, I'm doing everything remotely because I um, I don't have an external monitor for my Pi, so I'm just going to do everything through remote desktop, PuTTY, and also this other program that I'm going to show you called WinSCP. So I'm going to go into my Pi, I'm going to log in. The default username is Pi, and the default password is Raspberry. So now I'm inside my Raspberry Pi. Sorry about the lag, it's because I'm remotely connecting to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you can create a new folder and just call it server. Open that up. As you can see, there are no contents in it. I'm going to put contents in it using WinSCP. First of all, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into uh, sorry about all this. You're going to want to go into minecraft.net slash download. Once you're in here, you're going to download the server.jar, and you're also going to copy from Java to Node UI. Do not include this period. That really creates a problem inside your program. So copy that, and you can go into here and go here. And make sure you do download this. I already have it downloaded, so I'm fine. Move them to your desktop, and you're going to need to go into uh, roaming and find a save, a world save. The Raspberry Pi can create a world, it's just it has a hard time doing it, and I recommend just doing it through a world save. So just make sure you have a save. So now, make sure this is renamed to Minecraft under dash server. Not Minecraft under dash server 1.8.3. Um, and make sure it has the dot jar. And you're going to log in to WinSCP. I'll put the link down in the description for it. So, first of all, we have this folder here. It's on. So you're going to be in Pi, just go into Desktop and Server. There's no contents in here. We're about to add a couple contents. It's going to put both things in there. We're done. We got world in here and we also got our dot jar. So, now what we need to do is going to, we're going to right click new uh, text document and call it sum.sh and move over and call it run.sh okay right click it edit with oh my god come on more options notepad so now we're going to copy this that's in here and paste it into here Make sure this is put down to 500 because our Raspberry Pi only has one gigabyte and we don't want to kill our Raspberry Pi. 500 and we're going to save it, close out of that. I'm going to reopen WinSCP, drag that over into there, and we can log out. Now we're back in here, open up server, and we got our files here. Right click. Uh, properties, permissions, execute anyone, and click on run. Execute in terminal. 
Let's wait for this to load up. If you guys need help on creating an XRDP, uh, I'll put a link down in the description on how to do that. It's really pretty simple. You just install something and then you can remote to it. It's pretty simple. So now we need to accept the EULA. We're going to accept it to true and click on close. Now we're going to run it again. Execute and terminal. Alright, it looks like it's starting up. And right now it's preparing the spawn area. Since we already have that world file on there, it's not really going to uh, matter too much. And now we're going to stop it, and we're just going to basically restart it. So once it's re stopped, we're going to restart it again. Get rid of any errors and just have a fresh restart, basically. Usually it takes a while for it to actually start up the server. It is pretty cool that you can install... A server on your Raspberry Pi though. Alright, as you can see, we still have a little error, but it wasn't as big as the last time, so that's why I did the fresh reboot of the server. And now we have our server up, up and started. So we're going to stop this and we're going to mess around with the server.properties file. We're going to go down. Do not worry about the server IP. I actually learned that if you leave that blank, it will automatically find the IP of your Raspberry Pi. And you can connect to it using the Raspberry Pi's IP address. I like to do that a little bit better. It works really well. And I'm going to go into here and edit my message of the day. I'm just going to put down random stuff. And um, we're going to knock this down to about two. You can make it however much you want. PVP true. And that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to save it and close out of it. And now I'm going to show you Putty. I don't really like running it inside this terminal, inside uh, the graphical view, because text is small and everything. So we're going to memorize this up here, and we're going to log out. And now we're going to go into, I'm going to open it up through PuTTY inside of Windows H. Open this up, PuTTY. Again, default is username is pi, and the default uh, password is raspberry. Wait. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to go s the root home slash pi slash desktop. Make sure it's capital. Slash server slash run dot sh enter I had the same error last time and I have no idea why so we'll just run it in the graphical view I don't like running it in the graphical view but it looks like you gotta do things that you don't like to do we're gonna log out on this and click on yes hi Actually, we're just going to go on here. Server, run.sh, execute and terminal. And let's see. 
when we have it running up, we'll be able to see what it does. So, and to find the IP of your uh, of your um, Raspberry Pi, you just go here. You type in ifconfig. It's a little bit more different than Windows. And your actual IPv4 will show up right here. And mine is 192.168.0.101. And it looks like our server is beginning to start up. And it says starting Minecraft server on star. That's basically this IP address. And it's done. So let's test this out. Let's go into Minecraft and load it up. So, um, just, I already have it here, uh, as you can see my IP is the same, done, and click on join server, and as you can see, let's see what's happening inside of our terminal, it will soon recognize that I am trying to connect, and there it goes, and it says, uh, there are a little bit of errors, I can't keep up, and hopefully, it seems to have worked. Now, there is a little bit of jitter, you know, but it actually seems to work pretty well. There's a little tiny bit laggy, but you can't. You can't beat being able to play multiplayer uh, with your friends when they're in a different place. You're going to have to port forward in order to do that, but, you know, it's possible. You can do it. And it's for free, so, and it's a ras on a Raspberry Pi, so it's very cheap. And, as you can see, it runs pretty well, and I think... Yes, that's my least favorite thing. It's block lag. Doesn't seem to be doing it again anymore. Okay, let's see. Yep, so mining things is about the same. It's actually pretty clean. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, generates animals. Um, oh, it's a little bunny. Uh, pretty much generates everything. I'm kind of stuck on this little island, but that is pretty decent. So, yep, there you go. That's how you run a Minecraft server on your Raspberry Pi. And I will put the links where you download stuff in the description. And this was on a Raspberry Pi 2. So, Java was actually already installed, or on Raspbian, it was, it's already installed, so, um, you may have to find out a way to install it on a different OS, if you want to do it on a different OS, for the Raspberry Pi, but you need to make sure Java is installed, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I have no idea why my putty thing didn't work, like why I couldn't access the jar file on my putty that's usually how I start up my servers because it's just a little bit better just having almost like a terminal over here but you know uh, it usually works I don't know why it didn't work this time but um anyways um if you have any questions post them in the comments and